What's good, everybody? Welcome back to another My Damn Toys video. Today, we're back with a new 2-in-1 WWE Elite review on the WWE Elite Series 94 Edge and Bret the Hitman Heart figures. Now, before we get started, if you guys would like to grab these figures, you already like what you see, go over to Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10% when shopping over there. It'll save you some money, and I think they have a 4th of July sale going on right now, so you can get in on that. But I'm excited to review both of these. I wasn't too hyped on Bret Hart until I got it in hand, and then I saw some fix-ups that have been going around and now I am super hyped to do so so I, I cannot wait to crack him out and you guys already know, I, I remember when he first rock, walked out at Wrestlemania in this gear, everybody was tagging me all over social media, always appreciate you guys when somebody comes out in sick gear and you tag me in it, especially the white gear you guys know how I feel about the white gear it's absolutely gorgeous and we always mark out when people come out in all white gear like this, and to have it in figure form, we're going to do some comparisons, we're going to take a look at it, but here is the brand new packaging you got your images of the gentlemen here. Their names across the bottom, big WWE logo. On the side, you get their images again. On the back, you do get a great ring shot here. They did, they photoshopped the square that's supposed to go around this R right here. They photoshopped that out, so I guess you would think that the figure's accurate and you wouldn't make a big fuss about it. I don't know what the deal is there. You know, I don't really like that they did that, but you know, it is what it is. There's a little bio read. Rest of the figures in the wave, we do have three first time in the lines and probably last time in the lines in this entire wave. Now, Wesley, he he probably, he, he might get another figure down the line. But the rest of them, uh, I don't know, Brad. On the other side, you do have their names going down the side, of course. And you have your TrueFX logos and stuff all over it. So, man, with all that being said, man, let's go ahead and crack these guys out of their packaging. Find out what they're all about and see if they are worth a damn. So here is Edge and Bret Hart out of their packaging, looking solid as we might see. We do have our gripes, of course, right? I mean, we're not going to not have gripes, especially when we have this effing huge size rubber jacket. But we're going to dive into all the details. We're going to get into everything about this Edge and Bret Hart figure. And what we're going to do first is dive into Bret Hart's accessories and Bret Hart. Then we're going to run it back and take a closer look at Edge's accessories and Edge. Do some comparisons. Take a look at everything. Are these worth the purchase? Are they worth updating in your collection? Should you replace some other figures in there? We're going to find out today, man. So with all that being said, let's dive in to Edge and Bret Hart. All right, guys, so getting into Bret Hart's accessories. Starting out first, let's get into our Black Intercontinental Championship. Now, we've seen this championship before. Not like a ton of different things going on. You do have your classic block logo. Not completely accurate, but you guys know the deal on that. Black strap, you do have the blue world logo in there, which looks really good. It looks good on the figure, too. I think aesthetically pleasing. We've seen it before. Not going to spend too much time on it. But Mattel always nails their championships, and it's no different right here. Now, as far as the shades go, I like these a lot. You know, I don't know if they're the exact same as the Ultimate Edition, except they don't have the sticker glare on there, whatever it is. But they look good. They have like a kind of a metallic-y, glossy pink colorway going on there. You got to have your signature heart glasses. And then if you take the Bret Hart and you slide these in here, I think this makes the figure look a whole lot better. Like the head sculpt's not just the worst thing I've ever seen. It's not perfect Bret. You know, they struggle with Bret. But I think with the glasses on, I don't know, man. That's looking pretty good to me. You know, I'm not a, I'm not like a Bret Hart connoisseur or anything like that. You know, he's not my favorite of all time. But at the same time, I think that's pretty good, you know? I mean, I don't know what more you can ask for. With the sunglasses on there, with the shades, I mean, that's pretty much getting the job done for me. At least, you know, again, I'm not an expert, but this is looking pretty good for me. And then for your interchangeable hands, you do get your mic holding hands, which you've seen a hundred times. And then, of course, you get your Ricochet, Kawhi Leonard, massive handshaking entrance hands, or the, you know, what's popping, you know, sort of entrance Bret Hart hands where he's holding them out like this or whatever. So, yeah, I'd really like to see a new mold or make these hands smaller or something because I feel like they're a bit too damn big. All right, man, so diving into Bret Hart, we do have the head sculpt here, which people have mixed feelings on. I think that maybe the Ultimate Editions are better, but this isn't terrible. You know, I still have that George Washington-esque look going on with it, but I think with the glasses on there, it's not terrible. You know, it, it gets the job done. No hair on the forehead. The receding hairline doesn't seem to be a big deal. I think it captures Bret a little bit there. You have your jet black hair. Going down into the singlet, you do have your nice black and pink iconic singlet with your heart logo, your skull, your wings, all that stuff in there. Double jointed arms, nice sized arms here with black elbow pads, pink wrist tape. Then we do have the iconic Hitman gear going down. You do get Hitman in pink right there. White stripes, you do have your black rips going on. Black hearts, he does have pink knee pads, which are really nice. We've seen all these different sculpts before, so it's nothing too crazy, but I do like it. I like the way that it's got going on right here. I am expecting to get the chase soon so I can do a cool ringside exclusive, like all full pink Bret 
Hart fix up that we'll see, but he also has his iconic Bret Hart boots that I love so much that, uh, yeah, that patent leather around the front is just, just gorgeous, but this Bret Hart figure is nice. I am enjoying it a lot more than I thought I was going to, but he's pretty damn snazzy, man. I like him a lot. I, I like the way he looks. I like the way he's featured here. He's clean. He's cut. He's got everything going on, but let's get into some Bret Hart figure comparisons. So for your Bret Hart figure comparisons, you do have the Survivor Series Elite on the far left. You have the Elite 94, the WCW 2-pack with Goldberg, and then you do have the Ultimate Edition over here, and we can actually put the Ultimate Edition head over here and put this on the Ultimate Edition right quick, which could be pretty cool. So let's go ahead and see what this swap looks like, you know? So we'll put this head on here, just seeing what that looks like. That's not, you know, that's not terrible. I kind of like the paint splatter gear right there. And then we do have the Yelling Head Sculpt right here on the Elite 94, and it kind of sits a bit, yeah, it's, it kind of sits high, I'm going to be honest with you. It sits pretty high up there, so that, I don't know if that quite works, but I guess it's not terrible, you know, it's not terrible. You get a little bit of a different look there, but I think I like this head sculpt the most. I definitely don't really care for this one. I don't know, man. Bret Hart, just they, they just can't nail him, you know, they just can't nail him, but I think this one may be my favorite. I don't know, man. The Defining Moments is probably the best ever, but we have some pretty damn banger Bret Hart elites, and the, this is uh, this is a pretty good one, I'd say. I, I like this, and uh, now that I'm looking at this, like, orangish, pinkish color right here up next to the rest, I almost feel like this is almost the color, almost that, like, peachy tone that Randy Orton's SummerSlam trunks needed on the SummerSlam Elite, but that is it for your Bret Hart figure comparisons. Oh, yeah, and then we have Old Man Bret right here to compare as well with the with the dopey-looking face, so there's, there's that Bret Hart as well, if you guys even care about that one. So for Edge's accessories, you do get the big, giant rubber coat, you get two pairs of interchangeable hands, and you also get a pair of elbow pads, but I didn't want to include those because we didn't include them with Bret Hart, right? Like, they go in the figure. It's not... He's just not posed with them in the packaging for whatever reason, but we do get this ginormous... Like, oh my god, that goddamn fucking old-school Mattel stuck in that pose jacket. Gonna... Rubber coat, and you guys will notice the sleeves do come off. So what you'll do is you do pop the sleeves off, and then you put the jacket onto the figure like a vest, and then you will proceed to stick the rubber arms on there. That way you can articulate them straight up, and you know, you can you can articulate it. Now, while the thought is present, like I get it, the technology to be able to pose figures with the jackets, I'd rather just not have the jacket, you know what I mean? Like, I just don't like the rubber accessories whatsoever. It just doesn't quite, like you do get some cool sculpts in here, like if you zoom in, you do get some buckles and stuff, you get the logo on the back, and you know, you get your buckles and your divots and all your stitching and all these different things, which is cool to see, okay? It is cool to see, but I'd much rather see that in cloth or don't include it and give them a t-shirt or something, you know? Uh, I've seen them do, you know, cloth jackets before. I think if you were to give us the uh, the Legends Edge coat in that same sheen material, just change the logos on it, I think everybody would be way happier with that, right? So, tell me this down in the comment section below. If they gave us this jacket but in white and they just, like, say they made this right here white and then on the front they made all these buckles and stuff like that silver and then they added this with a logo like printed on here like these are and they gave us the red circles around the wrist cuffs in a logo printed onto the jacket and they put this logo on the back right here right here just printed on there it's not stitched it's not like you can't rub your finger over it and feel it but if you could just see it on there as a printed logo would that bother you would you rather have that or would you rather have this where it's sculpted now maybe they couldn't afford to put it in cloth and I understand that from different waves and such like that. It's just a rhetorical question. I would like to know down below if you would rather have a detailed sculpted jacket like this with the with the composable arms, which I just don't just don't like, or have a cloth one that doesn't have as much detail. Let me know. Nonetheless, you guys know you put this on here and then you can articulate it. It's okay. We've seen it in the past before, but you do get nice buckleage and stuff like that. Now, outside of that, you do get your mic holding hands. The left hand does have the wedding band on there. Not complete, but you know, you have your wedding band hand and then you do have the white wrist tape hand, which they did not add last time. They uh, they skipped over that, so it's cool to see that added. And then he has his rock and roll devil horns hands, rock and roll hands. You, you guys get the deal right there. So you have that, and he also has the ring finger there and the taped hand, so that's pretty cool. And this one, this finger's like kind of broken, so that's upsetting, but you guys get the point. You get the interchangeable hands, which is cool. Alright guys, we're starting out at the top of the head sculpt for the Elite 94 Edge. I like this head sculpt. It's the grimacing face. I, I like it. The hair's slick back there. He's kind of pissed off. This could go for a heel edge, a pissed off edge, a spearing edge. You got a lot of different options right here. Now, my biggest gripe with this figure is going to be the torso. They gave him the Daniel Bryan style torso, which doesn't fit Daniel Bryan. It doesn't fit AJ Styles. It doesn't fit
it, Ed, and it doesn't look good here. No chest hair. I do have a little roughness right there on the bicep for whatever reason, but I don't like this torso whatsoever. We'll see in the comparison shot of the video how good certain torsos can make this figure look, but you do have all this tattoo detail, which I like here, the elbow pads that we mentioned before, which look really good. They added the details of filling in the black on the back of the maroon elbow pads, which I really like. There's a back shot of the figure. You got the hair all slicked back and stuff like that. These are pinless, I'm pretty sure. You do have your pinless joints in there, which are cool. He's got his white wrist tape and white hand tape, which we discussed. Wish that peg was white. Hate to see it. They do have the R logo on there, the white tights, which are gorgeous. He's pretty much right. He rocked it at least till now. He may go back to these pants now that he's back to a baby face, but they did not include the square that's supposed to go around the R here, but they do have the white tights, which are gorgeous. I don't have any like, you know, like paint chipping or anything. They're very, very clean, which is nice. I like the logos on the side, which again, he's been rocking a while now. You do have your red lower legs there with the kick pads and the same designs on all of his different pants. We've gotten these pants like in four different colorways now, which we're going to get into, of course, but you do have your rated R logos on the knee pads there with the white and you got the black on the back, which is clean. Really wish that was white as well, but you know, it's not a huge deal. You know, you can't really tell because the red breaks it up with the knee pads. You know, you pull it down, it's not going to really notice, but damn, I love this figure. At least I love the, you know, the attire. The attire is sweet, nasty. But I'm digging this edge, man. Let's get into some figure comparisons. So for your edge figure comparisons, guys, you do have the Elite 83 fix up, the Elite 83 chase fix up, the Ultimate Edition, and then you have the Elite 94. Now, this is what's absurd. If you include the Legends figure and the Legends chase, this is Edge's sixth Elite since returning, like a updated six new figures or I guess uh, you do have the ultimate, but you know what I meant. You definitely know what I meant, but I had to fix this guy up a lot. I did give him a black hand tape hand. I painted his shoes in the chrome. I added like the white outline, or I never added the white line over here. I did add the white outline on this kick pad. I need to add the other, but I also gave him the updated torso. Like how much better does this torso look than this? Way more accurate. It has the chest hair. It has the stomach hair. It just fits the, it makes the figure look so damn good, man. And then you have the ultimate edition over here, but see, it's all the practically the same gear, just repainted, right? They all have like the same graphic on the side, except they're redone. Of course, the Ultimate Edition is a tad different as far as the feet and the formula and stuff like that. I'd still like to torso crack this and put this kind of torso on it right here and give him the double jointed arms. Uh, yeah, I mean, there, there's so many different things you can do here, man, but I am I am loving, like I've always loved Edge, except for when I was a kid. Hated his guts because, you know, he was constantly just a menace to society. But he's one of my favorites of all time, and to see all these new updated figures, I love it. I just wish they used the right formula because I think these really set the figure off, man. They really set the tone, and I can't wait to see what this figure will look like with an updated torso, adding the shoe details. I still gotta add details to this figure as well, but damn, which one do you like? Gray, white, black, or Ultimate Edition? I gotta say the white is probably my favorite, but I love the gray gear. The, the Guns N' Roses S gear right here is what I like to call this one. That one's really sweet, and the maroon was his return gear, so that's pretty cool as well, but damn, these edge figures are fire, and I'm enjoying the hell out of them. Also, one thing I also wanna do real quick is I do wanna look at what the Edge Legends coat looks like on this figure just for shishes and gigs, just in case you guys want to try that. And also, you could probably put the Defining Moment Shawn Michaels coat. I don't think I have that coat, but you could take this coat from the Legends Edge and just throw this on here, see what this looks like. I also want to get the hair over the back, you know, really capture the look here. And dude, look at that. Also, if you got the torso updated, that would look even better, but that looks pretty good. I know the reds aren't completely accurate, but I think they get the job done enough. I like that a lot, bro. That's that's pretty freaking sweet. Just keep giving me edge figures, man. That's that's pretty sweet. I love that. And then almost forgot, we have to do the Elite White and Red Randy Orton up next to the new Elite Edge. So we do have the Elite 90 Orton up next to the Elite 94 Edge. The Reds don't quite match, but I think it's still fire. I, I still think these look great up next to each other. You could, could easily run these two together in a tag team or something, but they do look really good up next to each other, and that's clean for me. You know, I don't have any issues with that. Rated R KO updated, you know, in modern day if you wanted to run that. There it is. How clean is that? Love that, man. That That is gorgeous. Just gotta get Edge's torso updated. But I think that pretty much wraps up our 2-in-1 Elite Series 94 Edge and Bret Hart review, man. Actually impressed with both of these figures a lot. Of course they're not perfect in any way, but I am digging both a lot, man. I think that Mattel really dropped the ball on the Edge torso. You know, he really put in all that work. I've said it many times. I don't know why they don't just fix those things. I don't know if it's because, you know, I, I've talked about this before 
before, it's like once they establish a certain formula for somebody, they rarely go away from that formula, man. And it, it's just the way it is. They've done it over the years with many different talents. And Edge is no different. I just don't think that the torso really meshes up nice with the legs. I think the legs are perfect musculature, perfect length. And it's not like the figure is just ugly with the torso that they gave him. But there's no chest hair. It doesn't really hide it at all. I think they could have used a plethora of different torsos. But I think the Cesaro slash Seth Rollins style torso with the chest hair that we saw on the different fix-ups and comparisons really sets the figure off, man. Especially with these double jointed arms and stuff like that. I don't have the elbow pads on the figure because I think it really hurts the articulation. If I put it on display, I probably will have it with the elbow pads, you know. But they do leave off some details with the Edge figure. They never get his shoes right, which is, is something that bothers me. But I do understand it to a certain degree. They gotta cut off the deco at some point. But we have seen it on Elite 82 Finn Balor. They have done shoe details and stuff. But I love the figure. I love the Edge figure a lot. I love the way the white looks. I think it just pops off really, really nicely. Really clean looking figure. However, I still think that both figures are sweet, man. I, I really like the Bret Hart a lot. I can't wait to get the chase in hand, possibly do a cool fix up. I think with the sunglasses on the Bret Hart, it's one of the best Bret Harts they've done, in my honest opinion. I love the double jointed arms. I like the singlet that they went with. I like the pink knee pads. I love that we got another black Intercontinental Championship. Looks really clean on the figure. I enjoy it, man. I enjoy both figures a lot, and I highly recommend them. So if you guys would like to grab these, go over to Ringside Collectibles, WrestlingFigures.com. Use promo code MDTOYS to save yourselves 10%. But I've had a ton of fun with these. Again, man, go check them out. Go get your hands on them. I think if you haven't gotten an updated edge, this is the perfect one. And you may want to sell your Ultimate Edition or your Elite 83. If you want to complete your Ultimate Editions, you know, keep it and stuff like that. But at the same time, man, this edge is just beautiful. It's the best modern edge we've seen so far. And I can, I can go that way. I can go that way right there. I know it's just kind of a repaint with a new head, but it's damn fire. It's definitely fire, and I think it's worth the grab, man. But that's going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so very much for watching. Before we get out of here, let's get into our random shout-out. And this shout-out is going to go to Phoenix King Flames Warrior, who says, What is your thoughts on Balor and Judgment Day? So speaking of Edge, this is a perfect time to get into this. So if you guys did not know, Monday Night Raw, Finn Balor came out, kicked Edge out of the Judgment Day, and took his spot. Apparently, there are rumors or things going around that Edge did not like the creative direction of the group, that they wanted to go like a supernatural route. And he said, F that, Brad and said, I don't want any part of this. So they booked Balor to come in there. So a couple of different things. I love that Balor's getting this opportunity in this big time spot as the leader of a heel group and faction. I think he's going to thrive in that environment. Glad to see that. But I also hate how WWE Creative tries to be imbecile sometimes. And if Edge doesn't go with it and he doesn't want to do it, it kind of speaks to how stupid it probably would have been. And we may have ended up in a Fiend situation. But I'm happy for Finn. And I'm glad to see Edge back as a babyface because I think that he works better in that role returning this late in the career. Career, but we'll have to see, man. But thank you so much for the comment. If you guys would like a shout out in a future video, be sure to comment down below. You could earn yourselves a shout out in a future video. But thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys next time. Have a blessed day, and yeah, you know, with with all due respect. You cross